Hello everyone and welcome to Dutch Greybeard. In 2023 I read 56 books and two short stories with a total page count of 21,680. The average page count per book is about 386 pages. Nine books were outside of the fantasy genre. In the fantasy genre I got acquainted with 11 new authors. For me those are impressive numbers. Just for comparison, from 2019 to 2022 I read on average about 30 books a year. To know that in 2024 I'll probably read about 50 books, perhaps even more, makes me feel like a kid in a candy store. My relationship with my TBR is curious, to say the least. I don't make a list, really. All the books I want to read are simply stacked away in two bookcases, and choosing a new book to read is primarily based on randomness. Since this year, one of these bookcases consists entirely of fantasy. At this moment, there are 153 books on those seven shelves. I am more than eager to start reading all of them sooner rather than later. And now that I'm quite sure I'll be reading 50 of them this coming year, it is just sheer fun to make a list of the books I just might read in 2024. Might. Just. In order to protect myself and my living space, I have one firm rule regarding my purchase policy. I do not allow myself to buy more books than can fit into this bookcase. Recently I bought nine works by Guy Gavriel Kay, thinking I could squeeze them in there. I could, but as you can see, I won't be buying books in the near future. Thankfully, my own rule leaves room for interpretation. Rearranging a bookcase, for instance, really can do wonders. Ta-da! I can buy more books. Let's go through my shelves and I'll pick around 50 books that meet the criterion sooner rather than later the most. It'll be fun to see at the end of the year which of those I've actually read. From the top shelf I'll pick the first three books in The Red Rising Saga by Pierce Brown. I've heard so many good things about this series, particularly from Mike's Books Review and I've been tempted several times this past year to pick it up. Next year, it'll happen, I think. Joe Abercrombie has also received lots of praise on Booktube, but one of my followers was taken aback by the gore and rude violence, which makes me a bit hesitant to pick it up very soon, perhaps in 2025. The Last Unicorn by Peter Beagle is a classic. Apart from the enjoyment of reading fantasy, I'm also curious in studying the genre as I go along. So I've bought a few books that are at the foundation of this genre or meant a lot to it. Recently I read one of Jules Verne's novels and by the end of 2024 I will definitely have read this one. That also goes for The Dreaming Tree by C.J. Cherry, a book that I must have picked up more than a dozen times last year, but haven't yet read. The Codex Alera by Jim Butcher. Hmm. I predict that these six books will still be on this TBR bookcase at the beginning of 2025. If I find myself in need of a shorter read, which will most certainly occur at some point next year, I'll pick up Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. The Great Goats series by Sebastian de Castell. Yes, I'm very much looking forward to enjoying the promised banter in these books. I'm not entirely sure if I'll be reading all four of them, but at least I'll be starting the series. Let's just put the first two on this list. 
I probably will not read Stonehenge by Bernard Cornwell, which is strictly speaking not fantasy. And that also goes for the Malorian series by David Eddings this coming year. So that's eight book on this shelf. Second shelf. The ten huge volumes of the Molasson Book of the Fallen by Stephen Erickson scare me a little, if I'm being honest. There is more than enough praise for these books on Booktube, but there is also quite some trepidation and restraint. It takes some perseverance to get through a lot of pages without really knowing what the story is about. At least, that's what I understand. I'm looking forward very much to the thrill of reading the much-praised Crippled God, the final volume, but I'm not very eager to start this huge series knowing that it takes a very, very long time before I get there. Apart from this, I do not want to read more than one ongoing huge series. And I have my mind set on another big one after I finish The Wheel of Time. From this shelf, I will most probably read the three books in the Empire series by Raymond T. Feist and Jenny Wirtz. I really loved the first series in the Rift War saga and have heard nothing but praise about this one. I will also pick up Legend by David Gemmell. This was personally recommended to me by one of my followers, whose judgment I value. If I'll continue with this series completely depends on how I like this first one. Mike, from Mike's Books Review, had very mixed feelings here. The Earthsea books by Ursula K. Le Guin will go to 2025. I read the first three books when I was younger and really enjoyed them. At this point, there is not a very great urge to start all the books. That's only four books on this shelf. The third shelf is occupied almost entirely by Robin Hobb. From her, I will most certainly read more books this coming year. It's difficult to predict how many. I'll be reading The Realm of the Elderlings in the usual order, so after finishing the Farseer trilogy with Assassin's Quest, I'll turn to the books in the Lifeship Trader trilogy. I might even add the Tawny Man trilogy to the list. Yeah, let's do that. Unless, of course, my appreciation of Hobbes' writing takes a dive, which I do not expect. That's seven books already from this shelf. I'll most likely leave the Four Faithful and the Fallen books by John Gwynne at rest here for another year. Especially with the next shelf coming up, where among other certain reads, my new love, Guy Gabriel Kay, resides. First, the certain reads. The three final books in The Wheel of Time, of course. I suppose I'll be reading these in the spring of 2024, clearing the way to start a new major series, which we'll come to at the end of this video. The world of Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time is next. I'm quite sure I'll enjoy reading the spoiler ins and outs of this series in this book. I will also pick up a book by the grandfather of the fantasy genre, George MacDonald. I think I'll choose The Princess and the Goblin, and maybe I'll add Fantastis to that. This is part of the big collection book you see here. Or maybe I should turn those around, because Fantastis was his first book, published back in 1853. These reads are mainly part of my investigative interest in the genre. Even though I'm eager to start reading the Lycanus trilogy, I'll have to make a tough choice here, because the books by GGK call out to me much louder. I've already read Tigana, but from here on, I want to read his books in publication order. So I'll read the three books in the Fiona Far Tapestry series first. Loving his writing as I do at this moment, I'll most probably be picking up more of his books. A Song for Arbonne received very convincing praise from Josh from Red Fury Books. So this will be on my list, and while I'm at it, I'll also pick up The Lions of Al Rasan. Even though I believe more GGK will be read coming year, I'll leave it at these five books for now. This shelf will be changed dramatically by the end of 2024 because I plan to read 10 books from it. I still feel like that kid in the candy shop. The list at this point consists of 28 titles, which mean I can still pick about 22 more. Let's move on. Shelf number five. 
I'm very hesitant about A Song of Ice and Fire. Looking forward to it very much, but there's always the elephant in the room of the unfinished status of this series. The same thing goes for Patrick Rothfuss, also on this shelf. His books shout out to me louder than those of George R. R. Martin, but I'm very undecided as of now. When push comes to shove, I predict I won't be reading these in 2024. If I'm mistaken, it'll be Rothfuss that will be read first. I will most likely read the first three books in The Legend of Drist by R. A. Salvatore. Again, I've held these books in my hands many times this past year, and every time I put them back. Perhaps I'll pick up another Terry Pratchett. I liked Guards Guards, but was it overwhelmed? I'm doubtful as to whether funny books are my cup of tea, really. Which one I'll be reading, I don't know. I'm very curious about Anne McCaffrey, another foundational writer in the genre. I might pick up the first one, Dragonflight, and see where it takes me. So that's five books from this shelf. The next shelf holds great promise for me. The next book on my Sanderson reading list is The Way of Kings. Yes, that one is definitely going down next year. According to Captured in Words, Warbreaker is the best next read after the first volume in the Stormlight Archive. That one is going on to the list as well. After that, I'll read a small novella from Arcanum Unbounded, which is not on the picture here, called Shadows for Silence in the Forests of Hell. Beautiful title. A short read of about 60 pages. After that, I think I'll be reading Words of Radiance, the book in this series that has received the most praise on Booktube. I may stop there because I really want to buy the fifth installment in this series in this mass paperback edition, which will be released no sooner than halfway 2025 or perhaps even later. I would like to finish reading this first arc of this planned 10 book series without having to wait too long for the final book. The three books of Ark of a Scythe go on my tentative TBR for 2024 as well. Heard so many good things about this series, and I like reading YA books. And last from this shelf, I'll be reading the Coppercat trilogy by Jen Williams. Long anticipated. That's ten books from this shelf, and I'm allowed even six more books to get to fifty. On the seventh and final shelf, finally appears the huge series that I want to begin reading this coming year after I've finished The Wheel of Time. And that is, of course, Wars of Light and Shadow by Jenny Wirtz, which is eleven big books long. I've heard so many good things about Jenny Wirtz's writing style, from A Critical Dragon, amongst others, that I've been eagerly waiting to begin with the first book, Curse of the Mist Wraith. Depending on my experience here, of course, I'll most likely read the second book as well. They are tomes, so I suppose two will be enough. I also want to begin reading the much-praised series by Tad Williams, Memories, Sorrow and Thorn. I'll leave it with the first two books, because I also want to read the two books in the Dark Water Legacy by Chris Wooding. This has received much praise from Andrew Watson, for one. The paperback edition of the second book will be released coming February, so I'll get a copy of that right away. From what I understand, there's at least one more book planned in this series, so perhaps I will decide, after all, to shelve this series for another year. Or I'll only read the first installment. Choices, choices. If I put both wedding books on the list, I've reached 50. I will no doubt also be reading other books outside of the fantasy genre, but about those I really have no idea at the moment. Anyway, if everything goes according to plan, I'll be reading at least these 50 books in 2024. I'll have gotten acquainted with 13 new authors in total by then. Let's meet again here in a year's time. And then I'll compare this list of 50 books with the books I've actually read by then. And now, it's time for candy. Thank you very much for watching this video. Until we meet again at Dutch Greybeard. Mm -hmm.